Welcome back guys to a new Morales video in which I'm gonna show you how to get the latest, the freshly minted ERC20 tokens. This is gonna be very easy with just a few lines of code and we're gonna use two Morales endpoints to get all this data. So you can do this for different chains as well. I've done it for five and I will show you how to do that. For this specific example that you can see right now on my screen, it's for ETH mainnet. But have in mind that even if it's mainnet or testnet, people are just creating different tokens to play around, to test things out. So just have in mind while we go through this list, because some of them will say uh, the name and the symbol like this, Hedron. But for example, some of them might not have a name or a symbol, but still we can get that data and we can display the block number, the date it got minted, uh, to which wallet, the amount, as we said, the contract address, uh, and we can easily take this to a token explorer and find out more about this specific token. And we also have the transaction hash. So while we scroll down, we can still see a uh, hedron. We can see hex, for example, and we can see different tokens that people have minted recently. And as I said, I've implemented this for five different chains. We can try Arbitrum, for example, but I've also added Binance, Guerly. You can see Mumbai. But this is totally up to you which ones you want to add and remove. So we can see with right here. We can see um, yeah, different ones that I don't even recognize, to be honest, because this is probably something that people have just played around with. But this is very cool. And I hope you're interested to find out how to build this with just a few lines of code. So stay tuned and I will show you how. Hey, I'm Joseph, your Web3 instructor from Sweden. I've been into crypto since 2017 and have been building in the space since 2021. In my free time, I enjoy playing paddle, going to the gym or hanging out with my dog. I always try to enjoy some good pancakes, but that's for another time. Now let's get back to the video. All right, so let's kick it off by creating a folder that we call get ERC20 token mints. That's gonna be our root folder. And then we're gonna have a backend and a frontend folder. So let's start with backend and in package JSON, we're gonna install four dependencies. We're gonna have course, we're gonna have .env, we're gonna have express, and we're also gonna have Morales right here. After that, we're gonna need to have an API key from Morales and store that inside the .env file. Now, if you don't have an, an API key already, you can get that by going to morales.io slash pricing to find out the different plans and which one suits you the best now the starter package or plan is for free and it's very good to get started you get a decent amount of uh, compute powers to try things out and play around but when you get serious on building within the web3 space and you really want to take your dApps to the next level pro account is the one to go with and once you set up your pro account go to login and inside the admin dashboard you go to web3 apis and from here you can get your own api key now make sure you copy this go back to visual studio code and paste that in inside the .env uh, file and once we've done that we can go to index.js and import all the things that we really need first of all we need all the four dependencies we just installed and then we're gonna set our server to port 5001 and like so we can import our um, API key from the .env file and we're gonna store it in the morales underscore API underscore key uh, const right here. We're gonna use this at the bottom once we uh, initialize our server. So we're gonna use morales.start to pass along our API key and then we're gonna listen to our backend server and the port we, we specified on top right here. So our backend server is gonna have one endpoint but it's gonna do two requests, okay? So tag along and I will explain everything line by line. So we're gonna have a get request on slash get mints. So our server is gonna do the request once our frontend client goes to this endpoint right here. And it's gonna send along a parameter and this is how we can extract it and use it right here. So we're gonna send the chain depending on which uh, field you choose in the dropdown menu on the frontend client. We're going to set the limit to 20, but you can easily tweak this to either have it dynamic from the frontend client or you can just set it to a hardcoded value right here. As I have done to 20, you can easily change this to 10, 15, uh, 72 or whatever excites you the most. So once we go to the slash get mints, we're going to do a request uh, using the token endpoint and to get ERC20 mints uh, on Morales' side to get the data we need. And I'm gonna show you how the data looks like in just a second, but have in mind that once we get the response back here, we want to loop through 
each and every item, which are 20, because that's the limit we set to. And for each and every one of them, which we can do right here in this for loop, we can do an iteration very easy through the length of this array. And for each and every one of them, we want to take the contract address, which we got from this uh, request right here. And we want to use that and do another request to the get token metadata. And this is just to get the symbol, the name, and the amount of decimals for each and every token. So we can easily display that on our front end client. And once we get this data back, we're gonna uh, push this desired data. So the name, the symbol, and the decimals along with the results array into this uh, final response object. And that is gonna be pushed in into this more data array, which we created right here. It's an empty array. So we're just populating it with some data. And when we're done with all of this, we're gonna uh, add this more data to this response variable. And that's the response we're sending back to our front-end client along with status 200. Now, before we jump into the front-end client, uh, let me actually show you the responses you're getting back from here and from here. So you can really understand what we're getting and why we do this part right here. So I'm going to go back to the Morales API and here is the get ERC20 means endpoint, which is the first one. So I'm going to set the limit to five. Uh, let's choose ETH mainnet as uh, the chain for now. Try it out and we can see at the bottom right here, the response we're getting back. So we have this results array with different objects. So this is one object right here and then we have another one and so on. So what do we do here? We wanted to take the contract address, right? If you remember, that's what we're taking right here and we're passing along as a parameter to this one and we're also taking the chain from on top so if it's eth mainnet right here it's gonna be eth mainnet right here as well so we can copy this and we can go to the other endpoint which is uh the get token metadata and we're gonna choose eth because that's the same chain id and then we're gonna add this contract address and once we try this out this is the data we're getting back and what we store is the name the symbol and the decimal now lucky as we are we decided to take the the one with, that didn't have a name or a symbol that's fine if it had uh, values this is where we would see those and this is the ones we store right here okay so once we send this response object back to our front end client we can do whatever we want with that data. We can console log it or we can display it as we do. Now, with that said, let me close this one and go to the front end folder, which is a Next.js application. Make sure you set that up. And inside package.json, you can see that I have also installed the react-select library along with Axios because we're going to need both of these. And I can actually also show you the index.js page, which is our homepage, and it's very clean. I've removed unnecessary things i've added this um, easy header or head tag and then i've added a header and the main component and we have these two components within the component folder right here so we can check header it's just the image the logo and then the title that we have on the header very clean and very easy so and inside main we can see that we have a few more stuff so we have use state that we import we import Axios and the React Select library. And we also import the CSS file. And then we have our main function, which should be called main, like so. Let me just double check that it is correct right here. Perfect, so let's go back. And we have three state variables. We have show results, which is set to false. We have result, which is an empty array. And we have chain value, which is an empty string. And here is the different drop down values I have created. So we have the label and then we have the value uh, which we want to get depending on which one you click on. Right. And also we've added some styling for the drop down menu. So if we go down to where we render everything within the return uh, statement, we have the select drop down right here. And from here, you can see that we have an on change handler and we run this change handler function once you click the drop down and click a value so let's go to this function right here we have it here and what we do is we take the chain value and we store that within uh, this chain value variable because this is the one we're gonna send to our backend server now have in mind that 
we store this whole part, okay? But essentially, we only want to send this one to the backend server. And since this is an object, we can get this from chain value dot value. And that's what we're doing down here in the handle submit. And the handle submit, we run when you click the submit button. We have this on click handle right here. So we get this change val chain value dot value and store it in chain. And we send it as a parameter to our backend server when we do this get request uh, to our backend server on port 5001 slash get mints. And once we've done all the magic on our backend server, along with the morality requests, we get the data back. We console log the response as it is. We store that array and we also set show results to true. And we also want to empty the chain value so it looks clean on the front end client. And we're going to render some things once this is true because it's false to begin with. And then we set it to true. And when this is true, we render all the magic cards, right? So we have two sections right here that are key to understand. So the first one is actually holding the keys and the second one is holding the values itself. So we have time, we have two wallet, we have amount, the contract address, and we have transaction hash. And then on the value side of things, we want to uh, populate this with data we get back from the backend server. So we have the final response, if you remember that, dot response dot block timestamp, and we split it just to get it displayed beautifully. We have the two wallet and we slice it so we don't have to display the whole string. We do the same with uh, the value. So we want to format that depending on the decimals that each and every token has. And then we add the two local string uh, just to add some space between the numbers. Then we have the contract address and we slice this as well. And finally, we have the transaction hash, which we slice as well. And that's it, guys. You don't need more hassle than this. You don't need a bunch of files, uh, thousands and thousands of lines of code. You just need to use Morales to get the data in a clean and simple way. And then how you display it is totally up to you. So let's go back to our application and I will show you how you can do this with, for example, Binance. So I hit Binance, I click Submit, and in just a few seconds, we will get the freshly minted ERC20 tokens on Binance chain. And here you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you smash the like button and I will see you in the next video.